Remember I said New Youth magazine? Very important. Because it was the platform where the intelligentsia, namely people like me, smart, could write... <laughs> Drew, uh, huh? Write stories, la, or whatever. And Lucen was one of them. He was an editor of New Youth magazine at one particular time. Yeah, these are all the big shots. I think one of them is Hushu and all that kind of a thing anyway. So that was the one that worked people up, yeah? And Lucen was one of them. Now, one great characteristic of this, of, this, of this new revolutionary writing was they used Paihua. And even I know Paihua means white language. So it must be very, very obvious, no? Paihua. Paihua meaning transparent, la, you know? That's why, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all white, you know? As against Wen Yan. So they controlled the people by having a small group of elites academic elites rule the country through the imperial examination. So they use among themselves a language, a written language called Wen Yan. So the ordinary people did Pai Hua, which was vernacular. So the vernacular of Singapore is largely English. And this is one of the reasons Pao Kun got really angry. Because all of us speak English. The difference was you get people like Lu Sun, who are top academics, writing in Baihua, writing in vernacular. It's a great move, yeah? You must understand that. It's years, eh? thousands of years of control. Not only did they write in the vernacular, Baihua, they also wrote stories from their lives. So in, in his, this particular one, medicine, uh, you get uh, Lu Sun recalling, you see, Lu Sun's father was very ill, and the little boy was sent to the pawn shop almost every day to pawn some small item to get money to buy medicine for his father who was dying. And the medicine included things like aloe root dug up in, in winter. Two little crickets, must be twin crickets, must look alike. Uh, um, sugar cane exposed to the frost for three years. Obviously, that medicine didn't work. So Lucen rebelled against this and he said, no, I'm going to learn to be a doctor of Western medicine because I want to save my people. And the way to do it is to learn Western medicine, not this stupid thing like, no cook two crickets, you know, that kind of a thing, and then your father will live. So he wrote medicine uh, following this particular story and my dear Cheyun is going to read Medicine for us. It was autumn, in the small hours of the morning. The moon had gone down, but the sun had not yet risen, and the sky was like a sheet of dark blue. Apart from night prowlers, all was asleep. Old Chan suddenly sat up in bed. He struck a match, and it cast a ghostly light into the room. From the small inner room, a fit of coughing was heard. Old Chan listened as he fastened his clothes. His wife, fumbling under the pillow, produced a packet of silver dollars. Old Chan pocketed it. He nervously patted his pocket twice, then went to light a paper lantern. He stepped out of the old tea house which he ran. Nobody was about. He came across a few dogs, but even they, did not bark. As he walked, the sky increasingly became brighter. He patted his pocket again. The silver dollars were still there. Then, a crowd rushed past. They grouped themselves into a semicircle at a crossroads. Old Tran saw them, craning their necks as high as they could. They all looked like so many ducks with their heads pulled up by some invisible hand. For a moment, all was still. Then, a sound was heard, and a stir swept through the onlookers. Hey, do you want the goods? Give me the cash. A large man clad entirely in black stood before him, his eyes like daggers, one huge hand extended, and in his other hand, the man held a steamed bun, which was dripping crimson drops to the ground. Hurriedly, Old Chan fumbled for his dollars. And trembling, he handed the money to the he handed the money over, but he dared not take the object. 
The other grew impatient and shouted, What are you afraid of? Take it! When Ultron still hesitated, the man in black snatched his lantern, tore off the shade and wrapped the bun with the paper. The man thrust the package into Ultron's hand, muttering, Old fool. Ultron's whole mind was on the package as he carefully carried it like he was carrying in his hands the sole heir to an ancient house. Nothing else mattered now. He was about to transplant this new life into his own home and reap much happiness. The sun had risen, lighting up the broad highway before him. Thank you. Bao Kun came to Singapore in 1949. In 1963, he went to Sydney to learn theatre making. In 1965, he comes back to Singapore. Now, from 1948, that means 49, China became communist. 1949. And in 1948, the communists were very, very active in Singapore and they had the emergency. The British largely put down the, the communist uh, revolution in, in Singapore and Malaya. In other, they were going to form a communist republic in Singapore and Malaya. It, it was brought in here. And they were put down. And then they started get, get, gathering themselves again and became active again in 1968. And um, the communists then infiltrated the factories, they infiltrated the people's, the, the associations, the communities, the schools, yeah, and especially the, uh, the Chinese middle schools. The Chinese middle school then had uh, students uh, uh, protesting and rioting, and here I took a picture of the Nanta, Nanta protests of 1960s. And Pao Kun describes how, uh, especially the Barisan socialists would have plays, and busloads of students and, and workers would come, uh, give their advice, um, and the, the, uh, you, you can't imagine how exciting that particular period was. So definitely he was sort of like carried on this particular wave, um, and he wrote plays like this, his earlier plays. Uh, hey, Wake Up, I believe, is the one where a girl uh, actually becomes a prostitute to, to get money uh, to give to her poor family and um, of course she's exploited and then in the struggle which was allowed to be produced only this year 2015 that was written in 1969 was about a family who lost their land uh, to a factory owner and the factory owner of course and then they had to work for the factory owner and of course the factory owner was an exploitative so-and-so um, so he, his plays were, uh, were very, very left-wing, and then you all know that um, in uh, 1976, uh, Pao Kun and Le Kuan was arrested in, in under the Internal Security Act. So Pao Kun was detained for four and a half years. Le Kuan, I believe, was two and a half months. Now, when I argue that uh, Kun was greatly influenced by Lu Sun, among other people. And I think that anybody who writes uh, with, with, with the idea of Chinese would be influenced by Lu Sun. And one of the proofs that I got was, I feel, is, this, uh, is, is that Lu Sun named his first collection of sh short stories, the very famous ones like um, The True Story of RQ, Medicine, which were published in the New Youth magazine. You remember New Youth magazine? Now, he was collected together and he named it Nahan. Some people say Nahan means a cry, an outcry, a scream. Um, I think that I like, which was uh, Lyle's, I think, uh, uh, definition, cheering on the sidelines. Because Lu Sun actually said that when he looked at his friends, the revolutionary writers desperately struggling to write a new youth, he couldn't help saying a few kind words to them. Now, have I got that here? I couldn't help calling out Nahan a few times so as to console the brave warriors running in their loneliness so that they would not be afraid of pressing onwards. Revolutionary is, uh, revolution is a lonely business, yeah? And uh, Pao Kun's first collection of plays was images at the margins. So you, you get the person walking on the sidelines, looking onto life and commenting on life.